Are we live? It's doing that thing where it doesn't want to show any inputs. That's wonderful, Internet. Thank you, Facebook. Sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to. I can see Sometimes. It. Basics Organomics. At Sorgatron on the Twitter. We are live on Facebook Live. I uh, told you that we were going to do more of these and on a regular basis. And then I did two. And then I didn't do them for almost two months. So there's that. But we're going to try something else. So we are going to, one, I'm going to have a co-host. There she is. I am also a Sorg, yes. so it is still basic Sorgonomics. So we're keeping the basic Sorgonomics yes. completely as a thing. <laughs> and you get double your Sorg for double your fun. Yeah, so this is going to be, and this is going to be one of those things where, and I was, I'm going to say this, and, and yes, we're starting at one uh, thirty. I would say this is going to be our morning show. <laughs> it's kind of the idea of Source looking at our watches, yes. Um, I think we need to define morning for you, sir. But the idea is, you know, this is kind of the first thing we do. We kind of have whatever concepts we've been boiling over in our heads overnight, and we're mm -hmm. going to do this. And I think on a business five days a week basis for the most part, as much as we can, right? Yeah, pretty much this is where we're going to have our conversations that we normally have not with people around. Mm-hmm with people around on the internet within reason within reason of course business related topics and discussions of course yes yes and i don't know and, and maybe we'll go back to this being a podcast or anything like that but for right now we're just gonna let it go on on facebook live and see what happens right that works so uh but anyways you know check out everything sorgatronmedia.com sidekickmediaservice.com is what we're doing uh to, that will kind of where we apply a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about and today we were having a conversation yesterday actually about uh, websites and and kind of like small businesses and things like that. Uh, I know I know Missy, you were talking with uh, somebody in the neighborhood about uh, their website and everything. And, and 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 it's a story that I've heard so many times about like people like go and do a website and then they get locked out of it or they get stuck with a provider or that's like pretty much like they're so, they're kind of shackled to. I like to use the term right. Yeah, um, like you said, I, I literally had this conversation yesterday because I stopped in to talk to a business owner about a community project and got talking away. And I know that she has a Facebook page that I th think she primarily uses as her website. Mm -hmm. And so I, I flat out asked her, I said, do you actually have a website for your business? And her response was, yeah, I've got one. I, I put it together a while ago. Something happened to it, so I wound up throwing something else up there. And her frustration with it is that she does a lot of sales-based stuff. Mm -hmm. and this is a retail. Yeah, it's retail. Mm -hmm. And her website doesn't incorporate sales. Mm -hmm. And she hasn't had the time or the energy or the resources to go in and fix it herself, so it's just languished. Um, there's a secondary site that she mentioned while we were still having this very same conversation that's more of a community focus on business website that they've not been able to get into for like two years. Two years. Something Jeez. ridiculous like that. So the website has been outdated for two years Jeez. because somebody lost the password and they don't know who maintains the password and, to be able to get into it and i've had this problem too and you know not that we've been great i need to update this one thing that we were trying to put together but like for our community for beachview like you would search for things you come up with like a beachview community site and i can't remember who, who who runs it for the life of me but it's just like that's your representation of your neighborhood that people find first other than google entries and things to, like to be that. honest yeah that might be the site that these people it might be the site <laughs> <laughs> like legit, it, it very well could be. It very well could be, yeah, yes. because you're like, oh, it's like beachview.org or beachview.com or something, and, and it has all this stuff in there and says, of course it's going to be the first thing that comes up when you search for this neighborhood or, or businesses or, or, or something, right? Um, and, and, and that's a problem. And I mean, that, that, again, it's kind of like, well, if you're not paying attention to the site like that, you know, what else are you not paying attention to in your neighborhood, right? I like, I feel like, and, and whether that's true or not, you're like, well, maybe, maybe you're, you're an organization that's paying so much attention on things you need to in the neighborhood. You know, a website is the last thing on your mind, but it, perception is key. Here's, here's my other thing as far as that's concerned. And I know this is something that we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. It's great to have a Facebook page. It's great to have Twitter, 
but you need to have a website because you need to have a home. Exactly. When I am searching for business stuff, I put in a Google search and Facebook or Twitter comes up. I'm still going to search for the website. I'm going to pull up the Twitter. I'm going to pull up the Facebook. And if the website's not linked on either of those, there's a problem. If there is no website, because a lot of people use Facebook pages as their website. Right. And while I understand the networking community aspect of it, you also have to realize that you're limited to what Facebook lets you do within that page. And I'm always really, uh, the, 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 you know, we've talked about this in a lot of cases, podcasting and things, but I'm always really big on, uh, okay, great. You, you set up your business on Facebook. And you're like, well, everybody's on Facebook, so what? 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 You know, why? Why do I want to be anywhere else? Uh, two aspects of that. One, something could happen. Like Facebook wasn't Facebook. A lot of people had a MySpace page before that. And mm-hmm. what happened to MySpace? And it's, I want to say, inevitable, but you never know what's going to happen where the next Facebook is going to come up. And you just invested all this, you know, time as a primary location on your Facebook. And now you're locked out of it because they decided that you're, you know, maybe you got, you know, somebody, somebody, you know, started complaining about you on Facebook, says you're against, against uh, a policy on Facebook, even though you're not just somebody trolling you maybe, but you get shut down and have to go through the process. Meanwhile, nobody can find out about your business. So it's good to have your own place that is your own, that you're paying for, that it is yours. And, and that's a lot easier than it used to be too. Well, here's, here's the other problem with Facebook is Facebook has adapted over the years. I remember when as a business, you pretty much had a secondary Facebook account because mm-hmm. pages was not a thing, right? You didn't have a business page. You had a business account. So we kind of faked it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then they rolled over the pages and that was like all this work that we put together for Mm -hmm. this profile for our business. We now have to transfer to a page, which, which, you know, that's going to happen. But meanwhile, while you're transferring, you can at least say, go to my business.com and you can, you can update the links and that should be the place that you fall back to no matter what, when we put our podcasts out, it's like, well, yeah, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, Facebook, YouTube, but there's always that .com or .net, whatever you have that's, you know, Hey, Oh wait, you're not, why why don't I see you on iTunes anymore? And you go back and you find this latest episode because maybe something happened with iTunes because we're not in control of that. Right. Well, and the other, the other thing, and this is when I did the podcasting um, session for WordCamp. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things where it was, sure, you're listed on iTunes. I have an Android device. How does that help me? How does that help me? Uh, So if you have your website, you can list all of these places where you are. And if Mm. somebody's using Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, whatever, they can still consume your podcast through whatever medium they use. Right. And it's all right there from your... So other than that, so, I mean, I'm sure we're going to talk a lot over the course of doing this, right, about uh, about the, the, you know, importance of having a dot com and everything like that. But I've also wanted to kind of talk about, because I've had a lot of experience of, what did I call it yesterday? Like rescuing businesses from their old website <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you put it as rescuing and I'm like, so are we one of those people that are like, I have your your website and I'm holding it for hostage. Like, it, but that's what it feels like. How many times have we talked to? I mean, we had somebody not too long ago come to us and be like, w- with their website that they're doing, w- what they have, and they're going through a developer. You know, that's actually you know a, a decently minded developer, web developer. Here's here's the here's I think the secret, in my opinion, when you're a small business, you don't need to go to a web developer to get your website done. You really don't need to. If you're a restaurant here on the on, on the avenue or something, you probably don't need to spend that much money on a website, you know. And and and, and so here's some of the situations that I've run into before, and I've been kind of doing this rescue website rescue thing since you know, geez, at least the early 2000s here, probably longer to be honest. You know, other other people that have businesses and like, oh, I'm on this thing, and it's like, well, here, try this. Um, you know, for instance, there was one that 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 we're on and. And the guy's like, oh, I spent like thousands of dollars for this. And I spent like like $2,000 to get a Google optimized and everything like that. It was like, that's great. But then you did nothing since. And, you know, and, and, and again, it, it always comes down to, well, you're worried on working on your website or I'm sorry, your business. 
and not always thinking about that website thing. So it, it, it falls behind. Technologies change, you know, Google changes. So if you spent money on, on all that kind of stuff around Google to make sure your site worked, that's not going to last two years later, let alone six months. You, ha- like you have to have somebody paying attention to that kind of thing. So, you know, and, and, and then coming out of some of these servers, you know, there, there's, you know, web hosts and web designers that have started small businesses like, you know, of different levels. And, you know, they charge, you know, 100, 200 bucks a month as like kind of a service contract. But then it's just not beneficial to a small, a small business. And you kind of have to wrestle that away, um, you know, to something a little more updated. And now we use, of course, Squarespace for a lot of our, we actually use Squarespace and we use WordPress depending on the project. Yes. And I'm really big on the tool for the job. Yeah. And, and that's just it. Um, if it's a site that we're putting together to pass off to somebody, mm-hmm. Squarespace is the way to go because it's easy integration. It's easy for, you don't have to know HTML. You don't have to know programming or coding or anything like that. If you break it, it's an easier fix for the most part. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and there's other ones that do. There's there's things like um like Webs does this, and there's there's a few others where it's all like you log into a uh, you log into this interface and you make the site and it's drag and drop and everything. But Squarespace seems to be the nicer of them. Plus, and the other thing I like about Squarespace is they offer hosting. So pretty much you pay each month or you pay a right, year. Right, right. But, but that's why I'm saying that whole all-in-one solution. There are several, there are several, you know, things. Like, you know, there's people out there that have been like, oh, I go at webs is easy, da, 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 da. You know, but I'm like, well, I, I, I like how Squarespace works. I like how Squarespace works. And this is where I was going with my thing before you cut me off. <laughs> was that uh, it's, it's one of those things that it's easy to use. Mm-hmm. And you can still customize it. And it's easy to customize. Right. I don't know a whole lot of coding in HTML. I, I know enough to get by with what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's something that we need to do a little bit more defined on, that's that's a project that I have you work on because that's what you do. And, um, and, and also, like, WordPress has kind of come around to this, too. There's WordPress.com. It's not the thing that you go to. If you go to GoDaddy and hit that WordPress button on your server and it installs it on there, great but then that's something that can really break and and godaddy's not going to fix it for you you know uh, without you know really kind of getting into the weeds on it so and i think you know and and i think if you go with the wordpress.com again it's somebody else is taking care of the updates on the back end and everything Mm -hmm. like that that's why when you go to somebody and they're like i want to do a wordpress installation and do this big customization thing which if you need that great but Mm -hmm. You know, then you're going to have to probably check the box for, you know, whatever a month. Somebody recently came to me and showed me showed me the, the price schedule for a website that they were going to go with. And they're like, there's this thing about like like updates and maintenance for like, I don't know, it was like 50 bucks a month or something. I was like, yeah, unless you're planning to do that and figure out WordPress, you should sign up for that. Because that person mm-hmm. is going to sit there, test everything, make sure it's updated. Yep. One time I was doing kind of a favor website for somebody that had a business a few years ago and I set up WordPress and I set up their design and everything, you know, you know, around templates and everything. And so they really didn't meet, need much. Right. And I sent everything to spec of what they wanted. Like we want this page and this page and this page. Right. And, uh, what's that? Check your shot because you're talking, but you're on me. Oh, hey, I, well, I forget about it. <laughs> That's why I'm this like, happens. hey, I'm sitting over here and this I'm not happens. talking. <laughs> but, um, but, but, but I set it up and I handed them the keys for it. And like a year or two later, they're like, yeah, they, it, there was problems with it. And the host just like erased it and put the old one up. And I was like, what the hell, <laughs> you know? But then again, you know, somebody needed to be there to update it. And nobody was there to update it. And that's one of the things that kind of swore me off is like, listen, if you want WordPress, there's a lot more that goes with it. And now we're not, I don't consider us web developers. If you need something designed and and developed like from scratch and all this big thing, I got plenty of people I can send you to. But, But for us, like, I think, you know, people just need a nice, simple website that gets the job done. Like, you know, we're, we're really good with those tools. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, we work with people that do that. So um, mm-hmm. like your indie wrestling site, for instance, that you had one of our one of the people within our community. Right. We were integrating e-commerce and everything like that. Mm-hmm. So we went to somebody about it and said, hey, you know, what do you, you, you know, what do you have 
you know, what do you think we can do with this to make it a little better and, and, and then kind of put it together? Yes. I mean, we have, we have a basic to medium. Mm-hmm. And if it's going to be something that you completely want to customize, that's when we bring in the, the expert experts. Absolutely. Um, and, 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 we, again, yeah, it's, and, it's, and it's a, I can get into it. But it's not the thing I want to do every day. <laughs> like let's let's put this on the people that are the everyday experts on, on on WordPress versus you know what we're doing with it. So, but I mean, it, and it's also it's a lot of the tool for the job. And I think you know, and again, looking back to all oh, this website's been sitting here for four years and 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 we can't get to it, but it has all the information there. I was like, yeah, but then you know, okay, you don't have a Facebook or a Twitter or anything like that. Dog has something to say over there now. Uh, you know, if you, if you don't have anything like that and you look at, um, you know, you look, you look at, uh, sorry, as people walking by and distracting me, but, <laughs> uh, you know, things had to be formatted a certain way. So it comes up on Twitter or Facebook. If I want to share something interesting in your page and it just comes up as a block of text instead of something interesting in, in, in any of those, you know, it doesn't work. Well, the other, the other problem that I have is especially if. If you're only on Twitter, mm-hmm. that's where you conduct your business is on Twitter. That's 140 characters. Right. If I am using your name to con- to talk with you, so that's, you know, at whatever, that's taking up precious commodity in that 140 character space. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to have a different platform than Twitter to be conducting your business and to be putting your business out there. Um the website's nice because, again, you can customize and have different pages for different things. So if you have different aspects of your business, say, you know, you, you do services, you do sales, and you do products, like product development. You have three different aspects of your business. You can dedicate a page toward each of those different aspects. Again, Facebook really doesn't let you do that because mm-hmm. it's just kind of thrown out there. You can do videos. Plus that format completely changes. and yep. Yeah. So you, you need to be able to kind of keep up with that as well. There was a, there was a message I was, you know, somebody put on like, where, where's our mission statement for this thing? Like in one of our pages. And they're like, it's right in the page of the about. And it's like, well, where'd that, where did that go? Because they changed it. And, and that's one of those things. If you're working with these, you have to be used to, they're always making quote improvements and it's always going to be updated. And they don't ask your permission to do that a lot. So, and again, as that happens and things move and maybe it becomes unmanageable, at least you have your website to fall back on. Yeah, or the worst case scenario, you're you're working along on a platform that you like and they get big enough and they get bought out by a completely Ooh, different platform yes. who then completely wipes them off the face of the earth. Yes, that happens. Yes. Um, yeah. RIP R- R- Google Reader, I miss you. Jeez. But that, that's just it. I mean, it's it's ever-changing. And even though website design and website maintenance kind of changes, mm-hmm. it doesn't change quite as much. And you can still upgrade and, upgrade and integrate with that website and keep it fresh. Absolutely. Um, the only other thing that I'm going to say with, with regard to websites is make sure that you're doing something to, to update and maintain that. Mm-hmm. Because if it doesn't look like you've done anything with your site in a few months, people are going to think that you're not actively doing things. Um, that's where blogging comes in, which is a whole other yeah, episode. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that in a but, different But we're really, like, yeah, I just encourage, if you're if you're sitting on a website for your business and, and it, it hasn't been looked at, like, it hasn't been really updated for about, let's say, three to four years I would highly, oh. should we say longer? Or no, if, if it's not been updated in three to four years, I'm just like, wow. I mean, you, you got to think you're, <laughs> you, you know, it's ancient history. And, and then the services that we look at are, even if I don't touch it for another two years, the back end of like a Squarespace or a WordPress is still updating. So all the under the hood stuff is still up the snuff as you go. If you didn't touch your, if let's say if you didn't touch your website in like five years, there's stuff on it that may not work in today's browsers that people are, are using on their phones, on, on, on their, their computers versus if I made a site five years ago in Squarespace, I think they've been, now they've been around way more than longer than that. Um, again, 
it should still work in my phone. <laughs> you know, it should work still in a, in a in a new browser. And I think that's, you know, one of those key takeaways for that. And phone, since you mentioned phone, is also really important. And we'll, we'll touch upon this maybe in the next few days. Making sure that your website is mobile compliant. If you have an iPhone, if you have an Android device, bring up your own website on there. I've recently brought up a couple of our like websites that we haven't updated for a little bit. And like I'm re- like some of the podcast ones have been around for a while. And I'm just like... They're, Ooh, on, they're on my list. They're on the list to get redesigned they, they here. There's definitely a lot that we can do with that. So, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, we suffer from it too sometimes because we're always working on everybody else's website. <laughs> we forget some of the properties that we have out there too. So uh, it's very important and very important to consider all those kinds of things. So, um, But anyways, uh, if you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, we're going to try to do this like kind of a I, – I don't want to say we're going to do it on a regular basis because I feel like that just, you know uh, – um, well, doing this on a regular basis for starters, if both of us are, are chatting. Might be a little easier. I think it'll be a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. Um, unless you're looking at getting the two of us in a room at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And, we, you know, certain things, like we definitely had an out <laughs> out day at Hilltopless last week, for instance. Or we could have done meetings this from or anything. Yeah, there we go. We could have done it from Hilltop. We'll just do it. And, like, we'll just pull up a phone and Facebook Live every once in a while when we're out and about. But uh, we have the space. We're here. Let's do this, you know, from time to time. If there's any topics you guys want to hit up, let us know on the Facebook page for Basics Organomics. Or hit us up on Twitter. Uh, I'm at Sorgatron. I'm at Rebellious Flaw. There you go. So you can ask questions on there. Uh, and uh, we'll see. We might put this out a couple places, too. So if you're catching us on uh, YouTube or the podcast feed, thank you very much. And, uh, of course, check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com and SidekickMediaServices.com. And we'll see you guys next time.